having champions in your roster that can literally solo dungeon bosses and some of the more pesky Doom Tower bosses is a massive, massive deal in terms of progression, especially for newer players. Last thing you want to do is be getting stuck on your Doom Tower climb because a certain extremely annoying boss is just freezing your progress. So, what is up, guys? This is Cobb, and in this video, we're going to be covering 10 epic champions that can solo bosses in this game that are actually super, super accessible, right? Non void epics, really easy to get your hands on. Let's do this. And while Fane is an epic champ that is not able to quite solo Demon Lord clan boss, she does do an incredible, incredible job into Demon Lord. And you can get Fane and Ugo and a couple of other epic champions completely for free simply by signing up to Raid using my beginner promo link down below at the top of the video description. Just make sure, as always, that you are signed out of Player and Player before clicking on that link to start off your new fresh start or your new free to play alter account or whatever it is you're after. You can also input beginner promo code mid game top to get your hands on Sigmund the High Shield in a additional free gem, but legendary in this case, once your account hits level 30. So, an incredible way to start off a new raid account. Let's get into the picks, man. Now, one shout out for the rare champions, a rare champ that you should absolutely hold on to if you're a new player just starting out in raid and you happen to pull yourself a master butcher. This guy, well worth keeping. You might not need him right away, but you will in time, probably. He brings a chance to place Provoke on his A1. He brings an even stronger Provoke, actually a two turn Provoke uh, on his A2. That's all great, so he offers like decent utility to your teams in general, but it is Master Butcher's passive that makes him an absolute cheat code into Dreadhorn Bommel in the Doom Tower, right? When attacked, heals all allies equal to the amount of damage taken does not work against bosses. However, this is not exactly true. Bommel, the Doom Tower boss, will summon bombs during the fight that count as enemy minions, and when they explode, they always deal 40% of your champion's health as damage. What this means is, if you just build Master Butcher to have the most health on your team going into Dreadhorn Bommel, he will always be healing himself and all of your allies for more health or for more damage than they are taking from the bomb explosions. Therefore, I do feel like Master Butcher, as a rare champ, is absolutely worth a mention in this kind of video, right? He's not going to be a solo carry, but he's going to be an absolute game changer and just unlock that boss for you in Doom Tower, one of the most challenging bosses in the game otherwise. Next up, and the first epic on this list is going to be Virgis, which is actually the uh, final epic champion that you get in order of rewards if you use our beginner promo link down below to sign up, right? This is one of the epic champs that you're going to get your hands on once your account hits level 50. Vegas is crazy as hell for soloing the Scarab King boss in Doom Tower. Another extremely, extremely rough boss to get started against as a new player because you just need so many tools and to pass so many stat checks to kind of get the job done. And while building out Vegas, he might be a little bit stat hungry. At least you only have to build out one champion. <laughs> to sort of get started against Scarab King and he can literally solo the entire fight as long as you just kill your way through the waves and actually get him to the boss. So his A1 attacks one enemy, has a chance of placing reflect damage on himself or just a random ally. Uh, on his A2, place a continuous heal and increase speed buff and reflect damage buff on Again, it will be on himself in this case if he's going to be soloing the boss. And then we have his passive. Place a shield buff on this champion equal to 10% of the max HP for two turns. Whenever this champ loses 10% or more of their max HP from a single hit, also, place uh, on a one turn cooldown fully booked, I should say, this is the active effect. Place a continuous heal buff on this champion for two turns every time their HP drops below 50%. So what you actually want to do with your Vegas is build him in a destroy set or a toxic set, right? And then you want to build him with as much resistance, HP and speed as you can possibly get. The resistance stat, very, very important. You want to build him with about 400 odd resistance to get your hands on the rewards for killing the hard Doom Tower Scarab King boss. But if you're only looking to take on normal mode Doom Tower, you actually only need to build him with like 150 plus resistance and you'll kind of be fine. The reason that you need to build him with this resistance, of course, is so that you are protecting his continuous heal buffs. You're protecting his increased speed buff and you're protecting his shield buff, right? You don't want those buffs to be getting shredded. Now, not only is Vegas able to actually solo his way through Scarab, he can also solo Dreadhorn Bommel as well. He can take care of that boss, at least in normal mode Doom Tower before things start getting tough. Then, in that case, you just want to switch him over to an Immortal and Regeneration set of gear. And as long as you have his masteries built out, so you have the War Master Mastery, he should be able to get the job done for you against Bommel as well, at least up until a point. A final note is that 
building Vegas with a certain amount of resistance and trying to build them out with as much resistance as you can. Not completely necessary. You've also got to take into account that you might have a champion that you can put into the team that has a plus resistance aura uh, for your entire party. And that's just an extra way that you can meet those sort of resistance stat checks against Scarab King Mansour. Yeah, what better place to start than Vegas, man? Okay, on to the Banner Lords. We're going to find the Booba Lady. Where the hell is she? Good old Lady Annabelle. Oh my god, this is going to be the next champ on the list. She's helped me out so, so much on my account, dude. This champ, yeah, one of the easiest methods in the game for soloing. Even the very hardest difficulties of Bommel. She brings the ability to get some self-healing from her A1, which is all she's going to really be spamming into this uh, Bommel Dreadhorn fight, if this is what you're building her for, right? Her other two skills in the matter of using her to solo Bommel don't really matter that much. Her passive, however, does matter. Heals this champion by 50% of their max HP whenever an ally or an enemy dies. Why is this so, so good? Well, because, again, when Bommel Dreadhorn summons his bombs, they count as enemy minions, meaning when they die, Lady Annabelle actually out-heals the damage of the bombs by a whole 10%, right? The bombs deal 40% health damage, she heals for 50%. Now, the only thing with uh, using Lady Annabelle this way is that, once again, you do want to have her masteries farmed out so that she's triggering the War Master uh, passive damage. Else, frankly... I think it's like anything above the easiest possible stage of Bommel. You're just going to run out of turns. Like you'll actually hit the turn limit uh, cap. And so in order to speed up the fight, you're going to need that War Mastery passive uh, eventually. And kind of right beside Lady Annabelle, we also have Burangiri, who basically has the same passive. In fact, it's pretty much word for word. The same passive, healing himself by 50% whenever an enemy or an ally dies. And so he kind of just does the same job. Uh, he doesn't have any healing on his A1. But you know what? It's not that impactful anyway. As long as you build them out very, very similar to how you'd build out the Lady Annabelle. Immortal set, regeneration set, all of that passive healing. As much health as you can possibly get so that you're healing for more. Then as much speed as you can possibly get on Buringiri or Lady Annabelle. So that they're taking as many turns as possible and they're triggering the heal from the regeneration set and the immortal set as much as possible. Speed is very, very important as well as health. Um, then yeah, you're going to be grand. Next up, man, we've got good old Venomage. The he, she, it is. So Venomage is one of those champs that you can use to solo your way through uh, the likes of Ice Golem and Dragon Dungeons. And the reason that that's so, so good to do is because you can then do things like Dragon Tournaments and Ice Golem Tournaments and farm all of those juicy rewards using just one champion, or maybe two champions, I guess, but you can build out Venomage to do it alone. And then you fill every other slot in the group with food champions. So you're just leveling food at the same time as you're completing all of these dungeon tournament rewards and stuff like that. It's great, it's very, very efficient to get done. Venomage is great for this purpose, right? Venomage has got an A1 that's a double hitter, destroys the target's max HP by 75% of the damage inflicted if they're under heal reduction. Also, each hit has a 50% chance booked of activating up to two poison debuffs on the target, meaning just to instantly trigger that poison damage. The A2 is able to place the strong versions of both decrease attack and decrease defense, and the A3 is where it's really all at. It's an attack all enemies, 100% chance booked of placing heal reduction, and also has 100% chance of placing two strong poison debuffs for two turns. When built out correctly, meaning high speed, as high health as humanly possible, and just in that good old immortal and regeneration gear, so plenty of self-healing for Venomage. Venomage can solo up to, I believe, at stage 20 of our dragon and ice golem. Maybe can push a little bit further if uh, you've got, like, super, super endgame gear or something, but this is more geared towards the uh, newer players. Now, Venomage does also get some additional survivability as well via the passive enemies under heal reduction debuffs inflict 15% less damage, which is not insignificant, right? The dragon can hit really, really hard, and so, yeah, this little bit of damage mitigation is probably going to help you out. Honestly, into Ice Golem as well. Ice Golem can also smack too, so, yeah, Venomage is well designed for the job of a solo carry style champ. And next up, you know we've got to cover Venomage's big brother, man. It's good old Basiliac Priest Orn of the Sylvan Watchers faction. And again, I just want to point out that none of these epics are going to be void affinity, meaning they're all very, very accessible from the likes of things like Ancient Shard, 2x pulling events, you know, you can just rip them from Ancient Shards. And if you get even one of these, Consider it a big, big win for your account, man. So what does Priest Orn do? The A1, it's a double hitter. Each uh, hit have a chance of placing a strong version of poison for two turns. 
Lovely, kind of predictable, right? <laughs> the A2, text one enemy two times, each it has a 100% chance bucked of instantly activating a poison debuff on the target, which again, very, very similar uh, to Venom Age 2. And then on the A3, attacks all enemies, has a 75% chance bucked of placing two strong poison debuffs and a poison sensitivity debuff for two turns, heals this champion by a percentage of the max HP for each poison debuff placed. By this skill so a little bit of extra survivability also bringing poison sense and so just increasing the damage that you're dealing uh, with your poisons as well that's all great man again it's really about the passive i think that just edges uh priest on out ahead of venomage whenever a poison debuff is activated on an enemy increase this champion's hp and defense by five percent stacks up to 25 so just quite a lot of extra survivability. More HP means more healing from the regeneration and the immortal sets that you're going to have your Priest on equipped in. And Masiliac Priest on is going to be able to farm as high up or as, high, or as low down, I guess, as Dragon Stage 25, okay? This is partially due to uh, Priest Orn being a Spirit Affinity Champ and so having like a positive affinity trade uh, into Stage 25 of Dragon, but can also do a hell of a lot of work into Ice Golem as well. I should also point out as well that like I'd say like roughly half of the champions on this list can completely solo these dungeons, as in killing off the waves and killing off the boss completely alone. But some champions on this list, um, you might need to throw like one damage dealer, one AoE nuka onto the team as well to sort of kill your way through the waves uh, a little bit if they're not quite strong enough to make it to the boss on their own, right? You're just ferrying your priest on, for example, to the boss to then get the job done. Next up, heading on into the Orcs faction, we have once again another Scarab King killer. Uh, for the Doom Tower in the form of Vrask. Absolutely badass looking son of a gun. I've actually got this champ myself. Pretty excited to build him out and see what he can do eventually. The A1 on this guy attacks one enemy, fills this champion's 10 meter by 20% if this attack is critical. So you will also have that kind of stat check of trying to build him with as close to 100% crit as you possibly can. The A2 is literally just attacks one enemy damage based on HP, so it's just, it's just a whack. Um, oftentimes, if you're using Vrask as a solo carry champ to just solo down the likes of the Scarab King, then you're just going to be disabling that A2 because, frankly, the 10 meter fill on the A1 is more important. And once again, we're going to be building Vrask in a toxic or destroy set probably toxic to take on Scarab King. And so we're going to be relying on poisons to deal most of the damage, and it's his passive that's going to be keeping him alive. Heals all allies by 10% of this champion's max HP whenever this champion inflicts a critical hit. Now, unlike the likes of Vegas, you don't need to be building out your Vrask with any kind of resistance, which is nice. You just want to do, just build them with like 80,000 health or more, and then build them to be as fast as possible um, with a decent amount of defense. And that's really it, you know, health is going to be key, health is going to directly scale up the amount of healing that you're getting uh, from the passive attacks anyway. And I should also mention as well that, of course, uh, while you want them in a toxic set, the other two set that you throw in there is going to be an immortal set. It's just going to give more health and more healing. Next up, we've got another Scarab Killer. Dude, you can tell that the community's come up really hard with solutions for taking on the Scarab King boss and for Bommel because, uh, like, a lot of these, like, solo carry champs, people are like, screw it, I don't want to bother building a full team to take on these annoying, annoying bosses, so I'm just going to build one champ that can get the job done. <laughs> and Taragi is another one of those champs that you can look out for. He brings a decreased attack, strong version on his A1, which is grand, and attack all enemies with a chance of placing Provoke uh, on his A1. 2, and then on the A3, place a shield buff equal to 15% of the champion's max HP and an ally protect buff on all allies uh, on the A3. And this is bookable down to a 310 cooldown, by the way, but this is key too. It also heals this champion by 25% of their max HP and places a reflect damage buff on them for 3 tens. So needless to say, if you're building out Taragi to take on Scarab, you probably want to be using the skill. You don't want to be getting hit with things like the enemy provoke and stuff like that. And so, yeah, you're going to be building out your Taragi with a good amount of resistance, 250, 300 resistance, you can usually get away with that because he has an aura that increases ally resistance in all battles by 40. So as long as your Taragi is the party lead, you can get away with building a little bit less resistance than usual on your Taragi the Frog for soloing Scarab. And you're going to be doing all of your damage via his passive, right? Your only job is to live in immortal gear, regeneration gear, good resistance, 
and let the passive do most of the work, right? When attacked, has a chance of placing a 5% poison debuff on the attacker for two turns. You've just got to exist, okay? That's the strategy with Taragi the Frog. And ideally, you'll also get to be using your A3 as well for that healing and for that uh, shield buff and stuff like that, just to help yourself stay alive. And so it's probably worth building out the resistance as well. And next up, man, we've got Cornelia the Dwarf, Magic Affinity Dwarf champ with a very, very kind of weirdo kit, honestly. So this is going to be another one of those champs that you can use to solo Bommel Dreadhorn. However, it's a little bit finicky. It's a little bit weird, man. And here's why, right? Her entire kit really for taking on Bommel relies on getting off her A3 at just the right time. And you'll notice right away that you can actually book this A3 down to just a 210 cooldown, which is kind of unheard of. It's very, very rare that any skill in the game uh, in raid can be booked down to a 210 cooldown. But this A3 can. What does it do? Place a sleep debuff on an ally for 110. Ideally, your Cornelia is the only champion alive against the Bommel, right? She's there to solo carry. You don't want her putting the sleep on a random ally. You want her putting it on herself. Why? Heals that ally by 50% of their max HP and fills the 10 meter by half. Whenever the sleep debuff expires or gets removed, heals that ally by 100% and completely fills their 10 meter if the sleep debuff is lost due to taking damage from an enemy. Now this is crazy as hell, man. And I don't know how the hell people figured this out, okay? But if you build your Cornelia, right, to have five like five to seven or something more speed. It's going to be very, very exact, like five to seven more speed than the current stage of Bommel you're up against. She will always get this sleep off in between the bombs detonating and the boss attacking in. Okay. I think it was YST that figured this out, man. Hey, shout out to YST, man. You should totally follow his channel. He's a good dude. So you need to literally Google stages of Bommel, right, in Raid Shadow Legends, and just check what the speed stats are for each of the bosses. You build your Cornelia to be five speed faster than the Bommel stage that you're going up against. You want to build that in, of course, Immortal Gear, Regeneration Gear, ideally like 75 or like 80,000 plus health, high defense, and that's it. The Bommel just can't kill her, man. <laughs> you might run out of turns, and so of course you've got to build her up with all of her masteries built out, so you have the War Master mastery uh, for actually dealing damage. But yeah, just the way that her heals are going to go off with her regeneration gear and because you've timed her speed just right against the bomber stage that you're up against, she will always get the sleep off in between otherwise fatal damage and just live. She should just be a live lord. That's it, really. It's a very, very sort of finicky strat that requires very, very exacting uh, gear builds and stuff, but... It can totally work out. And that is all I got, man, for these cheat code rares. Did I miss any off of this list? Make sure to plop them down below in the comments. Did I say rares? I meant epics, okay? Rares as well, man. Any champs that are just very, very accessible that can be used to solo the crap out of annoying bosses in this game, make sure to plop them down below, man. And hey, don't forget about Vegas, that you can get completely for free at account level 50, as well as three other epic champions by using my promo link down below at the top of the video description, man. So if you're looking to start off a new alt raid account, just make sure to sign out of Plarium Player on your PC and then download Raid using that link. Bam, you're good to go with an incredible, incredible start to your new journey. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all did enjoy this one. And I'm going to catch all of y'all just a tad bit later, man.